Let's discuss wheel bearing service. First of all, I want to point out two primary categories of, of wheel bearings. One would be what we'd call serviceable or tapered roller bearings. We find these on trailers, they're on the front wheels of any rear wheel drive car. Sometimes they're on the rear wheels of a front wheel drive car. They're generally on an axle that we'd say is idling. Uh, four wheel drive might be a little different category, but as a general rule, these are just uh, on an axle that idles or just rolls. It doesn't have, uh, most usually, not in every case, but uh, uh, a drive shaft, uh, turning a shaft through it with torque. But, but then again, in differentials, that's, that they do handle torque. The other kind of bearing, I guess we're going to call it a non-serviceable or sealed. Non-serviceable bearings are either pressed into the steering knuckle. You can recognize the steering knuckle where the tie rod goes, where your McPherson strut bolts on to. Okay. And this is what it would look like removed. Here's my sealed bearing. Here's the wheel hub. Okay. These are sealed and you have to press these in and out. The other type of non-serviceable wheel bearing would be ones that bolt on to the steering knuckle, the different variation of steering knuckle, but they actually just bolt onto the car. It comes out with a wheel hub bearing, in this case, an analog wheel ABS speed sensor all in one. Quite common by today's standards. I'll push it to the side. So, what I want to focus on right now is serviceable or tapered roller bearings, ones that we can grease. Now, I know this cap's been off a few times, it's going to come off kind of easy, but I often just give you a pair of pliers or I get a hammer and a chisel and try to knock it off. Okay? And then I got the cotter pin to deal with. Now, instead of wrestling this cotter pin, if I can't get it to come out easy, if I can at least grip it somehow, I just grab it. I, I use my side cutters and I'll grab it and kind of clamp. I don't cut it off, but grip it and clamp on it and pull the cotter pin out. And you can replace the cotter pin pretty easy. It only cost a few cents. Okay. All right. This nut here, by all intents and purposes, should be finger loose. It shouldn't uh, have to be tightened generally, but uh, as the bearing wears, you might have to just cinch them up a little. But we're going to go ahead and just spin this bearing apart. If it does require pliers to break it loose, it shouldn't have to take very much. Okay. Because these bearings are, again, tapered roller, meaning this. I'll pull the first one out. This bearing, I'll set this washer aside. We'll talk about its purpose later. This bearing and the other wheel bearing on the inboard side, um, they face each other. Okay. We're going to talk about how to service them here in a minute. But in order to get this other bearing out, quite often, I like to uh, just put the nut back on and I'll bring the whole hub. If there's a disc brake rotor on here or, or whatever else, you just grab it, let it kind of rest. Okay, I'm letting it rest on the spindle here. You just kind of slide hammer it off. And you get the bearing and seal off in one step. Now some guys are opposed to doing this kind of a method. And in order to get that seal and bearing out, they'll reach in from this side and with a punch or, a, or a, st a stick of oak, not pine. Pine slivers and splinters a lot. And they'll pound them out that way. They think it's softer and, and that's okay too. That's another method. But one thing I want to point out is these two bearings face each other. This one obviously is bigger and holds more of the weight. This one here is kind of a stabilizer. Handles some weight, but not near the amount of weight this other bearing does. But again, these kind of face each other. Okay? And I know I got the right bearing as if the in, inner race, the inner race of this bearing, slides on the spindle and rests on it. It shouldn't slop around at all. It should slide on there, not real firm, but with no play. The same with this bearing. Okay? Same with the seal. You get a new seal from a package. Clean this one up a little bit better. And this grease seal, it should, the rubber lip 
should go around this sleeve and should be a little snug on it. Okay, because again, this is where the seal keeps the dirt and water out and hopefully the grease in. Quite often, you can read on the seal a part number, and this one here is, is you know, it's got its own number 1509009 or something. And anyway, it might say national, it might say CR for Chicago Rawhide. But anyway, grease seal should be changed every time you replace a wheel bearing. So now we're down to the spindle. And uh, quite often, you know, wipe them off, especially where the seal rides. Um, I know this is really clean to begin with, but you might have to get some emery cloth and sand or clean this up a little bit. Get some spray and clean this up, okay? Get all the old grease out of there. Now, there's two philosophies on putting new grease in your bearings. Uh, a, a very large bearing manufacturer, Timken, they recommend you just simply pack in new grease and push out the old and wipe off the old. Another school is, well, if the grease in here is really gritty, you'll actually put it in solvent, get a brush, and scrub it and clean it. If you're going to scrub and clean the bearing out with solvent, the recommended thing to do is before packing the bearing is you'll scrub and blow it dry with an air gun three times. That way you get all the old grease, all the grit out, and then hose it down, spray it down with some brake spray, okay? Some brake cleaner spray. Spray it down, get all the solvent off. That's the key. We want to get the solvent off because the solvent breaks down grease. Let's not pack grease into a bearing that's got solvent residue on the rollers. Let's use some alcohol, okay, brake spray, then blow them dry, and now pack the bearing. I won't go through all that process, but I'm going to show you um, a couple of ways to pack bearings. Um, years ago when I was a technician, before I became an instructor, we seemed like everybody in the shop I worked had an easy squeeze bearing packer. And you put the bearing in that way, okay? Cone down if you want to call it. And you put your bearing packer on there. And what I'm looking for is for the grease to come squirting up between the inner race and the rollers and cage. So I'm going to push this down. I'll pull it out in a, in a minute, in a moment. And it just started to happen. You can see the grease started shooting up between, again, the rollers and the inner race. This bearing has now got grease inside the rollers where it needs to. Take the extra grease and kind of cake it on. Clear around. Okay. Um, not only that, I'm going to set him aside for a minute. But I'm going to get some more grease, and I should cake the actual race. Okay? Now, a race is what the bearing rolls on, rides on. I'm going to go ahead and set this one in there. That's plenty of grease. If you want to put some grease on the inside hub, clear inside there, you can put a film. You don't need a bunch. Just a film will suffice. Okay? What I mean by race is, when you buy a new bearing, you get a new race and a new bearing. These obviously are worn. These have pitted, flaked apart. These were pretty noisy when they're in service. You hear an actual grumble or, or growl as you drove on this, on this wheel bearing. But the fit, the precision fit between these rollers and the angle of this race is, is really close, really a tight tolerance. Okay. So I've, I've put grease on the race, I've packed the bearing itself, and if you don't have an easy squeeze, uh, what some guys will do, some people I should say, what some folks will do, they'll get a ball of grease in the palm of their hand, and you just take the bearing and you start nibbling away, and you start packing away until you see the grease starting to form up between the cage and the inner race, like that. And then you rotate and continue on. No matter how you do it, you're going to get greasy. If you have an, uh, an apparatus like that or you just use the palm of your hand. Okay? And so um, I'm going to finish the job with my easy squeeze. <laughs> well, there we go. OK. 
Okay. And I'm going to get a little more grease on here. First of all, I'm going to put this part back on. Again, I should have a new wheel seal, but this is a demo unit. Okay, I'm going to put that seal in there. And you can use a bearing driver. This is kind of overkill, but here's a nice flat surface to hopefully go on straight. If you don't have a bearing driver, a nice straight piece of wood, some guys will use that. This went in quite easy. But the point is, I want that seal to be flush with the housing. And put some grease on that rubber lip. Put some grease on the little shoulder that seal rides on. Okay. It never hurts to put a little bit of grease on the uh, spindle maybe for more of a rust corrosion issue. I really don't need grease here for the bearing to operate because the bearing's gonna rotate around its own inner race. It's gonna spin on its own race. But let's go ahead and assemble. I got my step or my lip for the rubber lip seal to ride on. I'm gonna put this back on here. Again, this, this is for trailer brakes. Any kind of a spindle that's uh, supporting tapered roller bearings, or the other term we used was serviceable bearings. Again, I want to put the cone in. Oh, I need to put some grease on my race inside there. That may not be quite enough, but I want to put a nice little coating in there. Okay, about the thickness of a nickel, if that makes any sense. A uh, couple of millimeters thick. Okay. If I want to put some more grease on the rollers themselves, that's always a good thing to do. Okay. Make sure we got plenty of grease on this guy. Okay. And poke him in. Now, let's talk about this washer. It's not just a regular washer. There's a tongue and a groove. This washer kind of isolates this revolving activity away from the spindle nut. This spindle nut has got a procedure to tighten, and it's pretty basic. We'll go through that here right now. Okay. So, um, some manufacturers or uh, repair manuals will have you or instruct you to tighten this nut to uh, a certain amount of torque or tightness, say like 12 foot pounds. You can just snug it up with a pair of pliers, make sure all the play is taken up, and then back it off. Okay, finger loose. Um, here's the torque wrench. I'm gonna go ahead and set it up for 12 foot pounds. And I think I'm already there. And, There's 12 foot pounds. Actually, went, I went to 13. Anyway. Well, that's about the same place I was earlier when I snugged with my pliers, but nonetheless, now the goal is to back it off because the whole point of this whole procedure is this. We don't want any in and out or end play. We don't want the rollers to kind of bang around against the race. We want them to be held into the race, but yet, not with excessive pressure. So that's why we go about finger tight. Okay? So there's no more end play, but yet there's not excessive pressure because I've only got a few inch of pounds of torque, if you want to call it that, with my fingers. Now here's the other, here's the other procedure. My cotter pin, if the hole doesn't line up, you back off the nut just until the hole lines up. Okay? And um, if the cotter pin, this is not the case, if it's too long, you know, just, just cut it off. But again, I've almost got one here, it's probably too short. But I'll still be able to get a hold of it and wrap it around. Oh yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be just fine. And then of course you'll put the dust cap back on. So, we have another cotter pin and castle nut 
Castley in that type of situation. Of course, this is a tie rod. And this applies, this principle I'm going to show you next also applies to ball joints. In wheel bearings, if the cotter pin hole doesn't line up, we loosen it a little and put the cotter pin in. On a tie rod, say the final torque on this is 45 foot pounds, maybe it's 55, I'm not sure of the application here. We'll tighten it down when it's on the steering knuckle and you, you get through tightening it down and the cotter hole doesn't line up. What do you do? You actually go a little tighter until it lines up. And I've got to find the cotter pin or the hole here in a second. Here we are. So maybe the hole doesn't quite line up. I can't get my cotter pin in the hole. I have to go just get your wrench and tighten it a little bit more and put the cotter pin in. Okay, whoops, I probably need to bring that down a little bit more. They're all gauged accordingly. But again, with ball joints and tie rods, hole doesn't line up, go a little tighter. Wheel bearings, hole doesn't line up, go a little looser. Okay, let's apply the same principles that we did with a trailer bearing or a front wheel bearing on a rear wheel drive car, an idler type bearing, right? Let's apply those same principles to what goes on inside of, say, a four wheel drive hub. Now this is just an old unit we've had around for years, but you know what? I can teach the principles on this and they apply still today. I've got most of these little uh, hub, four wheel drive locking hub bolts, okay? Already got them kind of out except one. So we'll take the four wheel drive hub assembly the rest of the way off. The lock assembly that is, okay? We'll set him aside. In fact, sometimes this next piece, I gotta get a snap ring off next, but sometimes it won't come out and I'll put it back in the hole, get two of them, I'll get my pliers and maybe work it out that way. So that's one way to get that miserable thing off when they're stubborn. But don't try taking it off until you have got two things removed. Um, one of them is this snap ring. If I could get on there. Okay, so he's got to come off. There's another one that was in here, <laughs> but I've already dug him out. It takes a while to dig him out. Leave this Phillips screw in there, okay, at least for now. All right. Um, I don't want the whole hub piece coming apart, at least I don't need it to. Okay, so there's my hub locking mechanism for the four-wheel drive hub. Okay, um, that's what locks this shaft to this hub. Okay, if I'm in the free position, okay, the wheel spins, but if I engage the hubs and it pushes this down, got to rotate a little bit, there we go. When I turn the wheel, it turns the whole assembly. Okay, it's just a spring-loaded collar that connects or disconnects the inner from the outer hub area. Okay, wheel bearing service. Um, you'll see the nut here in just a moment. Okay, this outer nut should be relatively tight. In fact, often the torque on this nut is somewhere between 80, 90 pounds or something of that nature. Okay, but the technical point here is, is that this first nut that comes off is flat on both sides. The inner nut, I'll pull off in a minute, has a little dowel, a little pin that sticks out. And that's where that one goes. And we'll show you why. The next thing that comes off is a little washer, tongue and groove situation, just like uh, the, the trailer bearing over there. Um, here's the tongue and it goes into a groove. This separates the outer nut from an inner nut so that the inner nut can keep the proper tension on the wheel bearing while the outer nut locks it and keeps everything together. Okay. The inner nut, I should be able to get this one by hand. Generally speaking, if he has to get broken with the ratchet, it should just be for a little bit of a twist. But he should come out. Okay. Yep. He wasn't anything real heavy. <laughs> Let's just spin him right out. 
And of course, for this, you're going to need a four-wheel drive hub socket if you've got the four uh, notches for the four spanner, the four uh, spanner type socket. It's a real common design type. Okay, and the second nut looks like this one. It's flat on the back side, but it's got that pin. And that pin is for a hole for those to fall onto. This is where guys don't pay attention. They get the nut tight like it should be. They get it adjusted, I should say. They put the washer on, but see this tongue will make this washer sit in one place. And if it doesn't line up with a hole, they tighten the outer nut and it pushes this pin inside. And you just get a pin and a little punch and drive it back out. Or it breaks it off. That's always fun. But then you've lost the whole purpose of keeping this nut in adjustment. That pin and this washer work together so this nut cannot move. And the outer nut just locks everything together so nothing can move. But, but ultimately, this is the, the wheel bearing adjustment nut. And this keeps the adjustment. So you'll have to reach back in. If this doesn't line up with the hole, you pull this back out. You tweak this one way or the other. Or you flip this around, the washer around. Either way until this hole lines up over the pin. Okay, and it's going to take a try, a couple of tries most often. All right. From this point on, it's the same. I'm just going to pull the bearing out. I've got to get this back on. I mean, this, this is a demo unit. There's no grease on it. But we would pack the bearings just like we did earlier. You would hose them down. If you wanted to hose them down with, with solvent and then spray them down with brake spray, you know, blow them dry, blow them dry. Pack them with grease. Again, this faces a certain way. Okay, I'll put him back in. I'm going to put the first nut on, little pin out. Maybe I should start it by hand, but I can often do it this way. Yep. Just got to spin on our ways because you got to fit a second nut on there, right? There we go. Okay. Just like what we did earlier. I'm going to get this socket. And I'm going to over tighten the nut. If I want to measure 12 foot pounds, you could, but just get him a little too tight. That tightens everything together, makes sure there's no play. Back it off. Now, about as tight as I can with my fingers, if I can find the little nubs. There they go. There, about that tight. I'll back it off and do it again. Okay, I don't want it loose, but I don't want it with pressure to heat up the bearings. Now the next part is, once again, I will, the tongue is on the bottom, usually. Where'd it go? Oh, it's on the side. I'll slide this in, I'll get my light, and I will find out if this little pin is going to fall into a hole. And I got lucky. <laughs> I got lucky. The pin lined up with the hole with that tongue and groove also lined up. The second nut. Okay. Again, this is where you get your torque wrench. And tighten him up. Bottom line is, this outer nut has got to be tight. And whether it be 60 pound or 80 foot pound, whatever they tell you to do, do it. Get him tight. It didn't move the inner nut because that washer isolates the two nuts. This is the point now. you would go ahead and put your four drive hub assembly back together. And I'll, I'll just do that on my own. 
Thank you. That's wheel bearing service for tapered roller bearings or serviceable type wheel bearings.